Council of Jerusalem, Acts 15. In Acts 15, 36, plans are made for the second missionary journey. The second missionary journey they thought was going to retrace the steps of the first missionary journey. Paul and Barnabas say it's time to go back. We need to check on these people we've led to Christ. We need to visit these churches. We need to see how they're doing. We don't abandon them as orphans. We stay in touch with them. They didn't have email. They didn't have telephones. They had to personally go be there if they were going to know anything about them. And so they get ready to go back. But then something happens. Something happens that's absolutely amazing. There's a disagreement. Now again, this is one thing that shows us that the Bible is true. Luke is telling us the truth when he tells us the story of the first century tr church. He was just going to make up things that sounded good, make up things that sounded encouraging. He would have never told us about the disagreement between Paul and Barnabas. I mean, this is a staggering thing to think that these two great Christians, these first missionaries, who were both full of the Holy Spirit, who went out on the first missionary journey together, could have such a sharp disagreement that they could no longer work together. It's amazing, but it's true. It happened. What can we say? It happened, and the Bible tells us about it. Now, what was the disagreement about? Remember in Acts 13.13, 13, John Mark quit. Three missionaries went out on the first missionary journey. Paul, Barnabas, and John Mark. The first place they went to was Cyprus, that island in the eastern Mediterranean. But in Cyprus, John Mark quit. Maybe it was too hard. Maybe he was homesick. Maybe he had a stomach ache. Maybe he missed his mother, but he went home. Now he wants to go on the second missionary journey. Barnabas says, let's let him go. Paul says, he's not going. Barnabas says, we need to let him go. Paul says, he's not going. Barnabas' argument is, we've got to put this thing called grace to work. Are we just going to preach grace and not practice grace? Paul is saying, he has to understand that there are consequences for his decision. If there are no consequences for our bad decisions, then we never learn that the decisions were bad and we shouldn't have made them. If we let him go, he's not going to learn the lesson. Now, I'm imagining what their arguments were. One thing that we discover is that John Mark is a cousin of Barnabas. When you work in a church, you need to understand something. No wisdom that you can come up with, no godliness that you can demonstrate is ever, 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 ever going to make anybody do anything that they think is against their family. People just don't do that. If, if people think they're taking a position for their family, they're not going to listen to you if you're not in your family. And the fact is, John Mark was family and Barnabas did not have the heart to throw him off the team. So what happens at the end of Acts 15? Amazingly, 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 they split up. What does it mean practically? What does it mean spiritually? Isn't God in control? Isn't the Holy Spirit filling these individuals? Isn't the Holy Spirit filling the church? If that's true, how could such a terrible thing happen? Well, you know what? Practically, it wasn't such a terrible thing because now we've got two, te two teams and not just one. Now we're going to cover twice as much ground. And so it's not only division. Division is a bad thing, but it's multiplication. Now there are two teams and not just one team. 
Let me just tell you that um, Christians debate about who was right. And there are a lot of Christians who say that Barnabas was right. That, that Paul should have listened to Barnabas, he should have forgiven John Mark, he should have restored John Mark and allowed him to go on the second missionary journey. Now they offer proof of this by appealing to a verse in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy is the last thing that Paul ever wrote. And in 2 Timothy, I think it's chapter 4, in 2 Timothy, Paul tells Timothy to, to send John Mark to him because, he, because he's greatly useful. And here's what people say. They say, see there, John Mark turned out to be okay. Paul should not have given up on him. And it proves that Paul should not have given up on him because Paul needs him and Paul is profiting, profiting by him by the time he reached the, reaches the end of his life and by the time he writes 2 Timothy. I want to say, first of all, I'm not a scholar and uh, my opinion is not very important. And a lot of very good men, very scholarly men, very spiritual men, and very um, men that we have a lot to learn from uh, are going to tell you that um, Barnabas was right and Paul was wrong and therefore um, he should have let John Mark go along. Well, I want to tell you that um, I think Paul was right. And let me tell you why I think Paul was right. One reason I think Paul was right is because even though, uh, even though we know that Paul made mistakes, it is not a part of Luke's theological purpose to, sh to talk about Paul's mistakes. To Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, Paul is a hero. Paul is the missionary par excellence. And Paul eventually replaces Peter as the chief apostle and as the great missionary to the Gentiles. It's not a part of Luke's purpose to highlight Paul's mistakes. That's the first thing. The second thing is this. Why was John Mark useful later? Why did he turn out okay? He didn't turn out okay only because Barnabas gave him another chance. He turned out okay because Paul taught him that decisions have consequences. If you make the wrong decision, you can't have everything that you would have had if you had made the right decision. Grace is a true principle. Forgiveness is a true principle, but the law of sowing and reaping is also a true principle. And what grace means is that when we get to heaven, Jesus brings it all back. But while we're on earth, our sin and our poor decisions have consequences. You know, Paul was forgiven. He was forgiven of all his sins. All his sins were washed away. But Paul helped to kill Stephen. When Paul was forgiven of his sins, when Paul uh, became a Christian, Stephen did not rise from the dead. If Stephen had a wife, she was still a widow. If Stephen had children, they were still orphans. If Stephen's parents were still alive, they were still bereaved and grieving over the loss of their son. Sin has consequences. Grace does not mean that there are no consequences of sin in this life. And Paul taught John Mark that there were consequences of his quitting the team on the first missionary journey. And the consequence was that he wasn't going to go with Paul on the second missionary journey. 
Did that mean he could never be with Paul again? Did that mean that Paul never wanted to have anything to do with him again? Not at all. Because Paul asks to see him again, and Paul talks about how important uh, John Mark is in his life. I found the verse finally, 2 Timothy 4.11. Pick up Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for service. So this didn't mean that Paul did not forgive John Mark. This did not mean that Paul said to, to Mark, I never want to see you again. Get out of my face. Get out of my life. I never want to see you again. That's not what he said. He said, because you quit the team on the first journey, you're not going on the second journey. It didn't mean there'd never be a time when you couldn't be a part of the team. It didn't mean you could, there'd never be a time when you can't share in my ministry, but it meant this time you're not going because you quit last time. Now here's the reality. There are Christians who are like Barnabas. What is Barnabas' name? What does his name mean? It means son of encouragement. There are Christians like Barnabas. And you know what those Christians are going to do? When we mess up, they're going to put their arms around us and they're going to pat us on the back and they say, oh, it's okay. It's all right. Don't worry about it. You'll do better next time. Just don't worry about it. Everything's forgiven. There are a lot of Christians like that. But you know what? There are also Christians who are like Paul. And they're going to look at us when we mess up. And they're, you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, you messed up. You did mess up. And it makes a difference. And the fact that you messed up changes things. And here's what's been changed. And you need to learn from this. And you're probably not going to learn from this unless you feel the pain from this. So it's not my job to take away all the pain from your sin. It's my job to help be sure that you learn everything you need to learn from your sin so that you don't sin again and bring more pain. So here's the reality. Do we need people like Barnabas in our life? We do. We certainly do. But do we also need people like Paul in our life? We absolutely do. So I'm not going to say Barnabas did the wrong thing by showing mercy. I'm not going to say that. But I'm also not going to say that Paul did the wrong thing. God raised up Barnabas to minister to Mark, and God raised up Paul to teach Mark and to instruct him and to show him that sin has consequences. So this is the way that Acts 15 ends. It ends with uh, plans for a new missionary journey, but with a different team. Now, originally, they were going to have the same team. Originally, Paul and Barnabas was, were going to go out again, but they had this disagreement. Barnabas says, well, we really are going to have the same team. We're going to have you, me, and John Mark. And Paul says, no, we're not. You and I, the same team that finished the journey are going to go together not the same team that began the journey. So they reached this ultimate disagreement. And amazingly, the disagreement became so sharp, Acts 15, 39, that they couldn't agree. The whole church agreed at the Council of Jerusalem. And Paul and Barnabas were on the same side in pressing for a grace position toward the Gentiles. That's what happens in the first part of Acts 15. But in the last part of Acts 15, two Christians, the Christians who were on the same side in Jerusalem in the big question, were on different sides in Antioch on the little question. So what happens? They split up and they don't work together anymore. Amazing. TVS is a perfect way to invest in the Kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support our educational and outreach ministry today. We exist solely upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. 
For more information, visit tvseminary.com. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, 11. How to give to TVS Ministry. You may give online at efta.org slash give now. In the description place, write Russia Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Or make checks out to EFCA. Write on the check memo line, Russian Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Mail to EFCA Donor Services, 901 East 78th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55420-1300 or send your gift through PayPal for tvs.gift at gmail.com.